live in a world full of unknowns, especially about what will happen in the future. There's a special truth about the end times that many people, including some Christians, don't really understand. This isn't just a religious idea. It's a key insight that could change how we see the world today. Our discussion today is not just another exploration of eschatology, the study of the end times in Christianity. It's about gaining a deep understanding of the time before Jesus Christ's significant return. We want to help you better prepare for and understand this important period. This journey is really about getting closer to Jesus Christ, who is central to our faith and the one who saves us. Right now is an important time in history, with many things happening that might be connected to what the Bible predicted. The main point here isn't to scare you or make you guess what will happen, but to help you be ready and spiritually aware. By examining scriptural references like the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 11, which speaks of Jesus' ascension and his promised return, we see not just a promise, but also hope for those who believe. As we explore these truths, let us focus not solely on the end of our earthly journey, whether it be through rapture or natural demise, but on the ultimate destination that awaits a place of eternal peace and joy, free from the sorrows of the present world. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 through 4 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Therefore, for you, the believer in Christ, the message of the end times is not one of fear, but of hope. And like Apostle Paul said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in us enables us to have such a hope that regardless of how we go, either in death or later through the rapture, there is a hope of a glorious eternity. I hope that you will find encouragement in these words. The truth is that we are in the end times and there is no denying that. We have seen and continue to see most biblical prophecies fulfill. I am saying that something is coming and it will change the course of time, life in the world systems, both for better and worse. It is better in the sense that every true child of God will see and enter eternal glory. And it is worse in the sense that the earth will plunge into darkness and experience the reign of the Antichrist, chaos and confusion as has never been before. Does this mean we already know when this will happen? No. We are saying we know the exact time Jesus will show up. No. Whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, this same Jesus whom we believe, the one who was born of a virgin, who walked the streets of Jerusalem, was crucified on Calvary, rose on the third day and ascended to heaven and is coming back. And only those who have a relationship with him, who have put their faith in him, will have a place with him for all eternity. Here is that unique information, and it is why I am so convinced about the closeness of the rapture. Apart from the fact that Jesus himself said there would be signs to confirm the truth of words, I noticed something else the Bible said would happen. This would be a sign only to those in Christ and not those outside. Only genuine believers can see this sign. You see, whenever new seasons are coming, God communicates to His people through His words and Spirit. Sometimes, you'll know what it is. 
Other times, everything may seem vague, but there will be a push on your heart. We often call this push a burden, but it's much more. Perhaps there is something you have been praying about or waiting on God for clarity. Sometimes God's guidance will not come through a spectacular manifestation, as you might expect it might, when it doesn't always come like that. Instead, it often comes as a witness or a burden on your heart, a pull in the direction God wants you to go. This burden may seem crazy or abnormal sometimes, but deep within your heart, you will know it is the right thing to do. Trust God and do it. But then you must ensure that this never contradicts the Word of God, because God will never be responsible for leading you to do something He says in His Word not to do. This burden isn't about feeling worried or anxious. It's more like waking up inside feeling something strong that resonates with what you believe in. It's God's way of talking to you, getting you ready for what's coming, so you're not surprised, but instead ready to follow His plans. The way God talks to you is really important for understanding what's happening around you. It's a close, personal way of communicating that goes beyond mere religious rules. It's about being connected to what God wants, knowing His plans, and aligning your life with His ideas. In a world that can be crazy and hard to predict, this kind of spiritual guidance is like a light of hope, giving you strength and clarity. It reminds you that even when the world is hard to understand, people who follow Christ have access to a special kind of wisdom. This wisdom transcends what people can figure out on their own and brings peace, even in tough times. As you go through these times, you should pay attention to these hints from God. Build a strong and active relationship with Him, one that lets you hear His quiet messages amidst the noise of the world. In this close relationship with God, you find the courage to face unknown challenges, the strength to remain firm in your beliefs, and the joy of looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. The great day of the Lord is approaching, and only true Christians can sense that it's closer than ever. Every true believer senses something about this age, and it stirs up a fire in their hearts. Please know that when the matter of our final salvation, the capturing of our souls from the earth, is preached or announced, it is a message meant to warn the unsaved in the world as well as to stir up the seed, but not in the same way as the unbeliever. For the unbeliever, it is a call the salvation to escape the coming eternal judgment. But for the believer in Christ, it has two purposes. Number one, to wake up those who are slumbering and walking in compromise, forgetting who they are and embracing this world instead of God. And number two, to encourage those who are steadfast to keep holding on so that they are not distracted as the journey is almost over and home is almost there. Paul carefully pens these words down for us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write you, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying, everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief, for you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, 
protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. In essence, this teaches about the unpredictability of the Lord's return. And it's like a surprise, similar to a thief coming at night when no one expects. It tells Christians to always be ready and live the right way. Like staying awake and good instead of sleeping or doing bad things like drinking too much at night. The Bible says that believing in God and loving others are like wearing armor to protect ourselves. And being sure about going to heaven is like a helmet to keep us safe. The main point is to encourage each other to do good and remind us that God wants to save us through Jesus, not to punish us. It's a reminder for Christians to always be prepared for when Jesus comes back and to help and support each other in their faith. Please understand that these words are not meant to trouble your heart as a believer, but to comfort you and prepare you for what is coming. Why? Because everything is almost over. You're almost at the finish line. Your home in eternity awaits you. This is the time to examine yourself and judge your actions. It is the natural response of every true Christian to the wake-up call of these times. Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31-32, but if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. If you fear the coming of Jesus, then this means that you are either not truly born again or you genuinely need to evaluate whether you are still in the faith. We are saved by God's grace through our faith in what Jesus has done. This is true. However, it doesn't just stop there. True faith in Jesus is transformational. It leads us down a path. It changes us, takes us from simply believing to living for the Lord. And there is still time to do that today. This is the time to answer that inner call to follow Jesus more than ever. You do not want to be caught unaware and miss the eternal beauty prepared for those who follow Jesus. So as the day draws closer, God is placing a strong pole in the hearts of his people. You may have begun observing these burdens around you or in your life. A hunger for the truth of the word, despite lies spreading everywhere. A desperate desire to spend more time with God in prayer and in the word. A desire to see souls saved by coming to Jesus. And a longing for intimacy with God, to know him more and more, and walk in his ways. Additionally, you might feel a growing urge to share God's love and compassion with those in need, reflecting Jesus' teachings in your daily actions. There could also be an increasing sense of urgency to stand firm in your faith amid challenges, remaining steadfast and unwavering in your beliefs. There might be an intensified call to nurture and strengthen the faith community, fostering unity, support, and spiritual growth among fellow believers. Furthermore, you might experience a deep yearning for spiritual renewal, both personally and within the wider church, seeking revival in hearts and communities. This could manifest as a desire to see a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, bringing renewed enthusiasm and commitment to God's work. Additionally, there may be an increasing sensitivity to injustice and a calling to advocate for righteousness and godly principles in society. 
striving to be a light in areas of darkness and to bring the values of the kingdom of God into everyday life. If you notice these burdens, please do not trivialize them. It is not about doing ministry. That is not the sole aim of these burdens in your hearts. The purpose is to prepare you for what is coming. The purpose is to get your heart in the right place. The purpose is to help you generate stamina or oil to keep burning for the Lord like the wise virgins. I am saying this because for a while it will look like darkness will prevail and sin will reign. Many will fall away and there will be many problems. Then, when everyone thinks nothing good is going to happen, the Lord will show up. These signs show that you are a child of God, and the Holy Spirit is stirring up your heart as we approach the Master's return so that you are not caught unaware. Hence, like an athlete running a race, our fear is not of reaching the finish line, but rather of being overtaken. However, in the kingdom, it's not about being overtaken by others, but about the distractions, uncertainties, and lies that can lead you off the right path, risking the loss of your awaiting crown. Remember, the devil is a liar. You will not lose your way on this journey in Jesus' name. As Peter said, you must be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is going around seeking someone to devour. As you sense these desires in your hearts, I beg you to please follow them. God will take care of you. You may lose opportunities, relationships, and possessions in the process. In return, you will gain much more in God for all eternity. Take note that whether we live or die before the Lord shows, let us keep believing, trusting, loving, and living by the promises of the Lord. Remember that when you face tough times, it's a chance to see how strong your faith is and how faithful God is. When you feel unsure or struggle, Remember that God's love for you doesn't change and His plans for you are good. Be confident in knowing that life's challenges are short compared to the endless happiness you'll have with God later. As you go through life, let yourself feel peaceful, knowing you're not alone. God is with you all the time, helping, keeping you safe, and taking care of you. Believe in this and let it give you hope and bravery. May you feel uplifted and your faith get stronger as you think about the wonderful time when we will meet the Lord and share in His forever joy. Until that time, keep spreading your light, love, and kindness just like God does for us.